Hi the internet, uh, this is Dave Gaskin and you're listening to and watching hopefully uh, Draw and Chat number three. Um, it's called Draw and Chat but with Draw and Chat number two I kind of got the ratio wrong and it was mostly just me talking which I guess <laughs> is going to be interesting to a point but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you, you kind of want to see some drawing as well. Um, so there's a few things going on. I haven't done one of these for a little while, but I thought I'd keep them going because uh, the rea reaction to them is always uh, it's actually really good. So thanks to everybody for watching and listening. Um, I'm working on at the moment. I'm working on a, uh, a sketch card of Christoph Waltz as uh, Dr. King Schultz in uh, Tarantino's Django Unchained. This is part of a, uh, a three sketch card commission that I was asked to do. Um, and it's sketch card commissions are great because that's one. It's one of the reasons why I'm focusing on sketch cards at the moment. I've worked bigger in the past, um, but the sketch cards just kind of fit in with my routine. You know, going to the day job, coming home. You know, you have to eat dinner and do the day to day stuff. So squeezing in some drawing time can often be quite tricky. Um, but the sketch cards kind of fit in just about right. Um, they tend to take you know an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. Uh, this one's actually proving to be a little bit difficult because Christoph Waltz is kind of hidden under a beard <laughs> as this character. So whereas you can normally rely on getting the facial features um, and you can almost, it's almost like sculpting in a way. Um, in fact, the, the, the card I did pre previous to this one, which is also part of the commission, I've got it here, is, the, is one of... Um, Mads Mikkelsen as uh, as Hannibal from the TV series Hannibal, um, and his his face is is really good to draw. I was talking with someone on Twitter just yesterday, Alistair Cook, I think it was, and he was saying that he'd drawn he'd drawn uh, Mads Mikkelsen a couple of times recently as well, and it's a very he's got a very sort of angular, almost structural sort of sculptural face. Um, so his features almost define themselves and. The shape of his mouth is is quite unique, and he's got this really long bridge on his nose, um, and sort of the high cheekbones. And it's the second time I've drawn him. I drew him earlier in the year um, as his character from uh, Casino Royale, the what the Daniel Craig's first Bond film where he played Le Chiffre. And uh, it was really interesting to draw him, and it was really good this time round as well. Um, so he's a he's a great likeness to try and capture. Uh, but yeah. Christoph Waltz is, is getting is proven to be a little bit more difficult, um, but I'm going to crack on. Um, we uh, we're actually going away on uh, holiday uh, this time next week, um, so we're going to be in we're going to be in Rome, um, which is an amazing amazing city. We went there uh, about ten years or so ago. Uh, my wife was on business, so she was in she was busy in the day, so I used to take myself off into into Rome and and look around and do the tourist thing. Uh, which was great, but I'd rather she'd been there to share it with as well. Um, so we had a little bit of time together to look around, but not very much. So we've always said we'd go back and do it properly. So that's the plan. Um, and you might remember, I think it was either in Draw and Chat 2 or maybe in the first one even, um, I mentioned that we might be moving house. Uh, it's a long story. It's a, it's a long story. And my work colleagues will be well and truly fed up of hearing about it. Um, they've all been really supportive so I have a lot of um, I have to thank them a lot for the the time and encouragement and you know when the when it's been not so great news and we, we found one house and we put an offer in on that and that didn't really work out so we then found another house and we put an offer in on that which got accepted and then a week later we got a call to say the, the owner had changed his mind and he didn't want to sell the house anymore I mean you know who does that really? So we just got, we've been, we've picked our, we've picked our owners, you know. Um, but we've now found this third house. Fortunately, we, it was it was one that was sort of on our, on our radar, and we were aware of it, and we'd sort of looked at a few pictures and thought, well, it's not exactly what we're looking for, but it does tick a lot of the boxes. So we went and had a look at that last weekend, um, put an offer in the next day, and then within half an hour. We got a call to say, yeah, your offer's been accepted. It's like, man, it, sh <laughs> it shouldn't be that easy, surely. Um, and I think it should be that easy. 
It's just our previous experience suggests otherwise. So the house move is all going to go ahead, hopefully fairly soon. Hopefully when we get back from holiday we'll have some news and an update on maybe a moving date so that we can um, get things rolling. Um, packing, all, packing all of this stuff up is going to be going to be fun. And we actually just started doing some this morning. I've got a lot of DVDs um, actually on the shelves just above where I'm sitting right now. Uh, big custom made shelves that my brother-in-law made for us. Um, and they're crammed. They're crammed with DVDs. And it works out at about one box per shelf. Um, so there's going to be quite a few boxes of DVDs. But never mind. Um, so the sketch cards that I've also been doing recently, not just commissioned ones, I did a couple of Breaking Bad cards. Uh, if you're on Instagram or Twitter or on the Facebook page, you would have seen these already. Um, but I I love Breaking Bad. My sister introduced me to it. Hi, sis. Uh, she bought us uh, she bought us season one for Christmas a couple of years ago, and we watched it and uh, loved it. So we you know instantly bought the next series on DVD and rattled through that, and then um, bought the rest of them. And it's just became it just became such a massive show. Um, so I thought you know it had always been on, on my mind to uh, perhaps do sketch cards of a few of the main characters. So. I did Walt first, and again, Brian Cranston's face is fascinating. I mean, he is so wrinkly, um, and in as, as Walt, sort of from the first few episodes of season one onwards, he's got he's shaved his head. So bald heads are always interesting, and they make it a bit easier to draw because he hasn't got any hair. Um, his beard's pretty straightforward, but a bald head always a plus when you're coming to draw someone. Um, so you've got a lot of highlights, you know. And you just get into the crevices and the round his eyes and the wrinkles on his forehead and um it was great. And then I asked the question on Facebook to <laughs> ask everybody who I should draw next and it was quite a quite a nice varied list of uh suggestions really. Jesse being an obvious one, but I wasn't gonna draw Jesse straight away. So I thought I'd go with Mike, um, as played by Jonathan Banks, who a lot of people may or may not have re even realised. Uh, he was in Beverly Hills Cop. He was uh, Victor Maitland's right-hand guy in Beverly Hills Cop. Bit of a jerk, as someone pointed out on Facebook. Yes, he absolutely was. Uh, but he's a, he's a great character actor. And um, again, his features, he's got a great bulbous nose and quite angular ears. Uh, so when you're, drawing, when you're drawing a face and you're trying to capture the likeness, you try and pick up on the features that sort of define that face, if you like. Um, I've had quite a few people asking me how I get the likenesses. Um, it's, you know, I've always drawn what I see. My imagination and coming up with stuff from thin air has always been rubbish. I mean, if anybody um, who I went to school with is watching this, and I'm sure there'll be a few of you, you might remember that I used to draw all the time, but I was always drawing, you know, copying a picture of Spider-Man or copying a picture of, you know, Superman from a comic book or... Um, redrawing cartoons, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, Hero Turtles as they were called in the UK, Ninja was far too violent, um, and that sort of thing. So I've all, for you know, uh, this isn't something I've picked up overnight. I've drawn for 20, 25 years, and I don't think some people would even realise that. You know, I tried to start drawing properly when I was in my early teens, maybe even 11, 12. Um, my art GCSEs, you know, I would have started art GCSE at the age of 11. So I guess that's where my um, my artistic journey, if you like, really kicked off. Um, you know, we were encouraged to draw still lives and, and draw things and, and be observational artists mainly. Um, there were a few people in, at school who, you know, they could just draw stuff from, from their imagination. But I was always observational mainly. Um, which, you know, you look at my gallery on DeviantArt and it kind of explains that. I've, I, I draw portraits, I love drawing faces because every single face is different. You know, you draw an apple, yes, apples are going to be different, but there's not as much variety. Okay, you've got your coxes and your brain burns, uh, but that's not really what, I'm, what I mean, you know. you got your... <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. But faces have always interested me. Um, so those two Breaking Bad ones are going to be in the next auction. Um, the the next auction I think is, is going to be sort of late July once we get back from our holiday um, house move pending obviously uh, but it will be the last probably be the last auction for a little while 
Um, I've got Nottingham Comic Con coming up in October, um, which is going to be great. I mean, I know I keep banging on about it, but it's a brilliant event, and it's one of those little it's one of those little conventions. Um, it's this is only the second year that it's run, um, but even just from last year, which was it, there was a lot of space at last year's event, but this year it's just it's just even bigger. I mean, you've got twice as much space, so there's going to be twice as many people to see and twice as much awesome artwork to potentially buy. Um, but look, this year I'm going to be focusing more on um, having having sort of original art and hand-drawn stuff rather than relying on um, prints of digital things. So last year it was mainly the, the Shepherd Fairy-inspired Hope um, sitcom characters. So some of you might remember the... Uh, the Sheldon Cooper Bazinga and Flip from the IT crowd and uh, Crichton from Red Dwarf, uh, the Smeeg piece um, and they went down really well and I'll probably have some of those with me again this year but it is going to be mostly sketch cards and um, I'll probably be drawing on the day as well which kind of scares me a little bit but at the same time um, it'll probably help relax me. There were a lot of people drawing on the day last year um, and if you're, you know, you want to get into art, watching somebody else and seeing how their processes sort of work, it's it's really it's really fascinating. Um, so yeah, th this auction will be the last one. There won't be quite as many because I haven't been drawing sketch cards every day, um, but the ones that I have done, the Breaking Bad ones, and there's, I think there's a couple of others as well, um, they should be available. But then everything I draw up until sort of October will just be available at Nottingham Comic Con. Um, and I'm probably going to open up, um, I th I'm thinking maybe 10, maybe 12 slots, commission slots, uh, so that you can commission a sketch card like this one. Um, I'll draw it in advance of the day, and then you pick it up in person, and you know I can sign it for you and, and do that sort of thing. So that'll be really cool. Um, it'll be really cool to draw on the day. And actually, I bought a, um, a little gadget ready for October, a little um, PayPal device. Uh, which is like a, a card reader, so that on the day people can pay with their debit cards. That would be fun. Um, so yeah, getting getting asked quite a bit about commissions and whether I do commissions. Obviously I do, this is one of them, uh, but I don't tend to do very many because it does have to fit around the day job and um, but the sketch card commissions are going really well and just this morning um, somebody asked me to do uh, a, a trio of Supernatural characters from the TV show Supernatural um, this is Lisa who's uh, hi Lisa <laughs> As, um, uh, I think we've found me on Twitter and um, has been really supportive, you know, all the way through, and was there right at the beginning of the sketch card days, back at the start of the year, which feels like so long ago. Even just the start of the year, I know we're halfway through. We're only halfway through the year, but the six months has flown by. Um, I don't really know where the time's gone. So yeah, you can see he's kind of he's kind of coming out now a little bit. I think Christoph here is. Uh, Quite a complex beard, um, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> shouldn't be too bad. Um, actually, just before I started drawing this uh, and recording this video, I was listening to um, Jeff Lafferty again, who, uh, again, I've mentioned it before, but he's really worth checking out. Um, he he uh, he was drawing Han Solo earlier this week, and as part of that that uh, V blog. Uh, that he uploaded, he uh, he mentioned that he was interviewed on a like a an art podcast. Um, so I was listening to that, and it was really really interesting. Uh, but it's I found that listening, if you if you're you know you're a creative person, you're an artist, or whatever, and you draw, and you either have music on or something like that, listening to other people's podcasts and and hearing their experiences, um, it can be really encouraging especially if you're having a down day, to know that you're not the only person who, you know, 
doesn't have a lot of confidence in their work sometimes and for a lot of people for a lot of illustrators and this does happen and it happens to me as well it can be it could almost be a crippling thing if you if you don't have the confidence in the stuff that you're creating um it's it's a very deep hole to get back out of without some sort of support um so i really really uh, recommend listening to a few other podcasts and hearing what what other people are experiencing and have experienced and and how they got through that sort of thing. Um, I was asked on Instagram the other day, how how do you get so good at doing likenesses? and, and No, how do you get so good at drawing, I think, was just like a general question. Um, and it's, it's a difficult one to answer. I mean, you know, I studied art at school, so it's not something that I've just suddenly decided I want to do and... Um, so I think I replied, you know, 25 years of practice, <laughs> which is true. It's, you know, I'm 37 now, um, so 25 years is, is about right. Um, and it is practice. It is practice. Pra if you want to get good, you can't expect it to happen overnight because it just, it just doesn't work like that. Unless you are blessed with some sort of, you know, gift and you're some sort of drawing superhero, I don't know, um, pencil man. <laughs> a bit like pencil head, I guess, out of uh, Mystery Man. Um, you know, you, you have got to be willing to put in the time and the effort. Um, I saw something on Twitter earlier today. It was, it was a great little meme, I guess you'd call it, and it was how to be a good illustrator. And it just said, um, for every, um, create plenty of bad drawings to ensure you get one good drawing or something like that. And you do, you just have to keep cracking on um, and practicing. And if you if you want it that bad, and if it's something that you really want to do, then you have to be prepared to put in the time. Um, drawing is, is the thing that I've always done. I was fairly quiet at school. Um, it wasn't really, I wasn't really nerdy because that wasn't really a thing. <laughs> Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, it wasn't. It certainly wasn't perceived to be cool to be a nerd, like it is now. A nerd or a geek? Yeah, I went to chess club, and uh, there were a few. I suppose you, they would be nerdier than me, but um, yeah, I was pretty quiet. I just kind of kept to myself, and you know, took the hits as you do at school, uh, and you know, I have no regrets. Uh, that helped make me the person I am today, I guess. As you know, it's all life experience. Um, but yeah, I can't remember what I was talking about now. That's the beauty of drawing a beard. You can get lost in the beard, much as I would imagine if you were to meet him in real life. Um, but yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. Uh, right now I'm using a HB pencil, uh, which is fairly light, just to get that initial layer of tone. Um, what I often do with these sorts of things is I will literally stand up and just take a step back and look at it from a distance, um, just to see how it's all working out. And that's, really, that's a really useful thing, it's something I used to do a lot when I was working digitally which I haven't done for a while actually, um, is to just, if you if you think a piece isn't working very well, just don't chuck it in, don't chuck it away, though I have done that in the past, um, just take a break from it, you know, go and watch some TV, um, go for a walk, there is an outdoor world, uh, <laughs> it just helps clear the head. Um, and then come back to it at a later date, uh, you know, a few hours later, the next day, whatever, and you'll probably find that it's not as bad as you thought. Um, I find I have to kind, I, I have to be in the zone, if you like, to do to do the drawing. Um, it can be a bit hit and miss. I'll have every intention. I'll be sat at work daydreaming about, yeah, I'm going to get home, I'm going to draw this, I'm going to draw that, and have a really productive evening and get at least two sketch cards done and then in reality you know I get in I think huh I wonder if Storage Hunters is on oh yeah yeah it is 
oh, there's, there's three episodes in a row. Well, I know I've seen these episodes before, but I might as well watch them again because I remember this really good bit. And then, okay, so that's, that's what, hour and a half gone. Um, and then it's like, oh, okay, I need to eat some dinner. Um, and then, this is literally like a regular day. This is like a regular day for me. Get home from work. Um, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I won't get to draw, I won't get to sit down at the desk until like half nine, ten o'clock. Um, by which time I'm pretty much ready for bed. <laughs> I just don't want to admit it. That is a thing, as you get older, can't stay up late anymore. Um, so yeah, I'll start drawing at like half ten after I've, you know, caught up on DeviantArt and um, seen what's going down on Twitter and everywhere else. Um, and it's like, huh, it's a bit late for drawing now. Well, I'll try and draw it. And then it just goes really badly or you just don't get anywhere. I'm just procrastinating on who to draw next, you know. Um, at least with the commissions I take on, it's, it's basically, okay, so this person wants this, so, okay. That's who I'm going to draw next. I don't have to... I have got a big folder of references. Back in the early days of the sketch card challenge where I was intending to draw one every day, I was like, right, I've got 365 cards to draw. I can't think of all of these people myself. Who do you want to see? Um, and at the beginning, it was really helpful because I was like, oh, yeah, that would be... That'll be quite a cool person to draw. Um, I've still got that list. So anybody who's <laughs> sort of sitting and waiting for me to draw their requests, I have still got that list, and I will dip into it. Um, but obviously, with the house move coming up soon, um, and we we don't know when it's going to happen, so everything's a bit kind of in the balance. We're not really sure when things are going to kick off, so. Um, not sure how much more drawing time I'm going to get over the next few months, really, um, to do anything other than prep for Nottingham in October. Um, but yeah, I have wasted a lot of time in the evenings. Um, and I, I don't know about other people, but I always tend to sort of find this creative little... Um, burst happens really late in the evening it's like my body's like come on Dave it's time to go to bed and I'm like no 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 I've got to draw I've got to draw and uh, yeah so I'll be drawing and almost falling asleep um, actually this is going quite well right now I don't know how well you can see this because it's still quite pale um, I made a good bit of progress. So this draw and chat is actually living up to its name, which is great. Um, so yeah, I don't know when the next one's going to be. Uh, like I say, I may try and squeeze another one in. Um, maybe end of July sometime. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for listening and watching, and uh, see you again soon.